Happening now, breaking news. The Jamestown man is charged with two arsons in the city. Jamestown Red Raiders are bumped down a class. And I'm Dakota Hunter in the First Defense Weather Center. Chance for a flurry today before temperatures rise up a little bit for tomorrow. But we're watching another storm system that's going to come across the East Coast. We'll break it all down for you coming up. The Eagles win the Super Bowl and St. Bonaventure pulls off an improbable victory in hostile territory. Those stories next in sports. That's news now for Monday, February 5th, 2018. Live and on demand from the Chautauqua Audio Works Studios in downtown Jamestown. This is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. Thanks for joining us. Happy Monday. I'm Justin Gould. We have some breaking news to tell you about. A city of Jamestown man was arrested this morning after Jamestown police say he set two fires in January and November. 31-year-old David Wright was charged with second-degree arson related to fires at Phillips Street and Mount Vernon Place. The Mount Vernon Place fire occurred on November 18, 2017. The Phillips Street fire occurred on January 19 of 2018. Wright was also charged with second-degree criminal mischief. Police said he was arraigned in the Jamestown City Court this morning and committed to county jail. Investigators urge anyone with information related to crimes in the city of Jamestown to contact their tip line at 483-TIPS. The number again is 483-8477. All Salamanca City Schools are closed today as a result of student and staff illnesses. The district released a statement over the weekend saying the campus will undergo a deep clean from Sunday until Tuesday morning. The statement read, in order to take precautionary measures and be proactive, we will conduct a deep and thorough clean of our classrooms and common areas as a result of recent student and staff illnesses. Classes are expected to resume tomorrow. And Jamestown Red Raiders varsity football team will no longer play in the double A's. Coach Tom Langworthy tweeted the announcement on Saturday. Langworthy said a change in the program's policy raised the beds number slightly. The beds number is based off of student enrollment in the school and in the program. This new cutoff has lowered the team's ranking, prompting the change. Langworthy said they will miss playing their usual schedule, but look forward to competing against new opponents. The Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office charged a 60-year-old woman with animal cruelty after she neglected a number of goats at her farm. The investigation between the Sheriff's Office and ASPCA found that Connie Lepeck of Ashford failed to care for five goats at her Foltz Road property. Investigators say she did not provide sufficient food, an abundant source of clean water or shelter for the goats. This is the third animal cruelty arrest in Cattaraugus County since the beginning of this year. And now we check in with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter with a first look at our weather. Hey, Dakota. Hey, good morning, everybody. If there is such thing as a good morning, let's take a look at the uh, Viper radar to begin with. And I have it zoomed out on a regional basis. This is one little band of lake effect snow that is coming off Lake Ontario. It doesn't look like it's impacting anybody at the moment, but down in our direction, just a few little potato flakes are showing up on the radar. So the forecast pretty much for today, chance for a few flakes and or snow showers early in the day. It's going to be light. Otherwise, we go partly to most sunny throughout the afternoon hours. It's going to be a cold day though. Temperatures range between 17 in the valleys to 21 at the Lake Erie shoreline. For comparison, the average high temperature for this time of the year is 30. So we're not going to see that today, but at least the sunshine will make it feel a little bit nicer with that west wind 10 to 15 miles an hour. And again, sunset time coming up at 537. We are continuing to add one to two minutes of sunset time for the remainder of the winter. So at least the days are getting longer and we're going to watch another storm system that's going to come across the east coast that could throw some measure snow our way. We'll talk about it in just a few minutes. All right, Dakota, thank you. Flu hospitalizations and deaths are on the rise amid a particularly rough flu season. The CDC reported an additional 16 pediatric flu deaths last week. The total number of children killed by the virus so far this season stands at 53. 
48 states are reporting widespread flu activity, including New York. A CDC spokeswoman said that that's as bad as its wave of flu cases hasn't, it's bad and the wave of flu cases haven't peaked yet. The good news is, though, you still have some time to protect yourself. Mary Maloney explains. Spring is getting closer, and with it the end of a particularly brutal flu season. Many might be thinking there's no point in getting the flu shot now. Think again. No, it's not too late. We really could have several more weeks of flu season. According to the FDA, the seasonal flu vaccine is the best way to lower your risk of getting sick and spreading it to others. Even though it's best to get vaccinated as soon as the flu shot is available, usually in September, getting the vaccine later can still be helpful. It's not too late because even if you feel like uh, flu has come to your community and now is decreasing, there could be a second wave and it could be a different type of virus. Every flu season is made up of varying strains of the virus. This year's dominant strain is H3N2. It has proven a challenge to the vaccine, but the flu shot is relatively more effective for other strains circulating this year. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Next here, two men face DWI charges following separate crashes over the weekend. And later, some controversy over a Super Bowl commercial. We'll let you know which one coming up. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. Everything's made fresh here. We love to be outside, uh, and it's nice inside if it's raining, so we have a choice. Locals and non-locals agree that the main landing is quickly becoming a destination. It's just so casual, and just the food is amazing. Uh, I love the hamburgers. But I really like the tuna I had. The main landing restaurant, excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. Do news like no one else. Investigations that get results. There was a bunch of kids over here playing uh, football, and the ball kicked over onto her. She picked it up and took a butcher knife, stabbed it. The cops wouldn't do nothing. WNY News Now investigates, standing up for you while holding the powerful accountable. If you have a problem, we're here to help. WNY News Now. WNY News Now is sponsored by Chautauqua Audio Works, 3335 South Roberts Road in Fredonia. More than a music store. Call 679-4333. Call now, 679-4333. Chautauqua County Sheriff's deputies say an Edinburgh, Pennsylvania man was driving drunk before he crashed his car into a tree at the intersection of Conway and Mann Roads. This all happened Saturday night in the town of French Creek. 63-year-old Anthony Kelm faces multiple charges, including DWI. He will answer them in the town of French Creek at a later date. And another DWI-related crash Sunday morning in the town of Westfield. Deputies say 28-year-old Chad Tronowski of Sugar Grove crashed his vehicle into a ditch on Sherman Westfield Road. He faces a number of related charges and will appear in the town of Westfield Court at a later date. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's ashamed that this country failed to help Puerto Rico recover faster from last year's hurricane. The governor made those remarks Saturday during a rally in the Bronx with Puerto Rico's Governor Ricardo Rosello. And I want you to know that the pain on the island and the destruction on the island which is worse than you see on the pictures, worse than you see on the pictures, it is indescribable that that pain resonated all through New York. I hope, Governor, that you and the people on the island felt the love that came out of New Yorkers, the spontaneous outpouring of support was like nothing I've ever seen. I wish I could say to you, Governor, that we organized the contributions that came from New York. We didn't. It was spontaneous. It was the emotion that New Yorkers felt. 
Furthermore, Cuomo wants more government money to be allocated to fund the island's recovery. He blames the Trump administration for the lack of relief to the island nation. Larry Nasser was sentenced to 40 to 125 years in prison today after pleading guilty to three counts of criminal sexual conduct in Michigan. Days of emotional testimony in two Michigan courtrooms led to this final sentence for the former sports doctor whose serial sexual abuse of girls and young women has shaken Michigan State University and elite sports associations nationwide. Of corrections. Want to come back? Nasser admitted to using his position as a trusted doctor to sexually abuse young girls under the guise of providing medical treatment. The 54-year-old is expected to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Now, your first defense forecast with Dakota Hunter. Some very sick people in this world, I'm telling you. Anyway, let's go to the SkyVision camera network, and uh, we are looking live at the Seneca Allegheny Casino in Salamanca, and you can see the passerbys there on I-86 and some of that nice little light snow that is falling. The temperature is 17 degrees with a dew point of 8 and a southwest wind of 9, creating that wind chill index of, well, it's in the single digits of 6 degrees, so yeah pretty chilly. Now let's go into the main graphics and uh, we'll take a look at the ice coverage on Lake Erie and uh, it's been so cloudy the past couple days we have not been able to get a very good view of the ice coverage on the lake but I think if we can get the clouds to break today we might be able to get a good view of the clouds pretty much for the afternoon hours but pretty much for right now the uh, the uh, ice coverage is at 84 percent that's the overall ice coverage across the entire lake and the average ice thickness is a uh, little over four inches it's actually a little over four and a half inches right now and uh, you can still see there's some patches of blue out here those are the patches of open water that is currently out on lake erie and again when we get some more sunshine and the clouds break over the lake, we'll get a better view of the lake from space. 13 degrees is the current temperature at the airport. We have a wind chill index of two below zero. Oh, when you combine it with that west wind of 13 miles an hour and five mile visibility at the airport because of that light snow. However, this light snow is very light. It's not really returning on radar. So it's either very, very light or it's falling underneath the radar beam. But with the winds blowing it around, that is creating some kind of, you know, it's kind of lowering the visibility a little bit. And you can see the sun trying to peek through there at the JCC sky cam that's overlooking the dorms at the JCC campus. Now, regionally, the temperatures around the region still pretty chilly. 15 in Dunkirk, got 16 in uh, Erie, 16 in Buffalo, 18 in the, in the Falls, 10 in Olean down in the Allegheny River Valley. So these temperatures are a bit below average. Average high is 30. So again, temperature is still, uh, still a bit below average. Doppler vision, there you see that again, it's not really returning, but there is that light snow shower that likely is falling underneath the radar beam because you have to remember the radar beam uh, it's several thousand feet off the ground down here. So we're not sure if it's falling underneath the radar beam or if it's just light enough. But you can see there's that band of lake effect coming off Lake Ontario. And as we zoom the radar out, it's besides that pretty quiet across the state and uh, much of the Great Lakes. But as we peek way back here to the west, there's this storm system back out here. Now this actually is going to be a part of what's going to be coming our way. It's going to merge with another system that's going to develop off the east coast. So this out here is going to be part of it, not the entire thing, but it will be part of what we're going to be dealing with for midweek. So break down today's forecast on Metro Cac, uh, on, on Metrocast, 17 degrees at 1 o'clock for today. We'll probably see some partial sunshine. The clouds look like they'll break, and we'll probably see some nice partial sunshine for today. Still a chance of a light snow flurry. Going into 5 o'clock, clouds will rethicken. Once again, we'll be around 19 degrees. We're going to struggle to hit 20 today. So we're probably going to be in the teens. A few spots may actually hit 20, but expect upper teens as high as today. And then 17 degrees at nine o'clock and it won't be as breezy as it was last night it was a little breezy last night so uh, we won't have that wind uh, pretty as high as it was tonight either now here is the big issue coming our way for the midweek all these blue all these uh, red arrows here is the projected storm track 
this storm system is going to be tracking off to our east, but in the wake of this, it is going to throw some measurable snow our way, and it's going to be an area-wide snow. This isn't going to be a localized event. This is going to be a widespread event, and the amount of snow we're going to see out of this is questionable. Again, it's too early to throw out numbers, but we'll give you the first defense here <clears throat> on everything that we're expecting here. So the storm system will track across the northeast Tuesday night going into Wednesday night, and the current model data takes the center of it way off to our southeast, and uh, so that will keep it, that'll keep the worst of it away from here. But again, it will be a good measurable snowfall and good shovelable to plowable snowfall across western New York. Higher totals will be found eastward, of course, the center of the storm sees the worst of it. So wherever you are, so if you're near the center of that storm, expect to see the worst. But over in our area, it's not going to be as bad, but it's still too early to place exact numbers. As you know, we are not in that business of throwing out numbers uh, when it's too early. The current model data doesn't give us a whole lot, but of course we will fine tune this forecast throughout the week. And of course we'll give you numbers when it is appropriate to do so. Zone by zone for tomorrow and uh, the temperatures come up for tomorrow. Take a look at this. We've got mid to upper 20s showing up across the county tomorrow and chance of a few light snow showers or a flurry less than an inch there with a pretty healthy west wind as well. Same story once you go eastward, uh, mid to upper 20s showing up here, less than an inch of light snowflakes. Otherwise, some limited blowing snow with some gusty winds west uh, 7 to 16 miles an hour and the gust could be around 30 miles an hour as well. So we'll keep an eye on that and I hit the wrong button. But anyway, the seven day of your life, next seven days of your life are coming up. There's the first three, and uh, there you see 19 degrees for today, average high. And then there's that storm system that comes our way Wednesday, uh, going into Wednesday night, and then we go for 29, and then spanning out the rest of that forecast, it's gonna be cold, but hey, the temperatures rebound a little bit. We go back into the 30s for the weekend as well. All right, Dakota, thank you so much. Coming up next in sports, a recap of last night's Super Bowl game and a big win for St. Bonaventure. Ryan has it all when we return. Stay with us. First Defense Weather is sponsored by Quick Solutions of Jamestown. Count on Quick Solutions for printing, copying, mass mailings, and so much more. Part of your team. Learn more at quicksolutionsusa.com. That's quicksolutionsusa.com. Like great food, great news needs experts. Become a community reporter when you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about. Drop us a line on Facebook today. Speaking of great food, Jeremy's Bellevue offers pasta, classic burgers, seafood, and of course, wings. Visit Jeremy's Bellevue on Facebook. The team that puts coverage first. We have um, some breaking news. Police confirming now that Steve Stevens was found dead in Erie, Pennsylvania. This house is on fire and it's dangerously close to the Apple Yard Terrace. Fire crews battling another blaze. It needs to be treated as the terrorist act that it is. He got the ball, he just went to the hoop and he shot it. And as for the star of the show, Tucker Pierce. Uh, I think I feel good. Proceeds from the Battle of the Classes going to the Alex Folk Foundation. 50 years of service and dedication to, to anything is very impressive. Put your lives on, on the line for your neighbors. It's just something that I think people should do. You have to give back to the community. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at phonezoneshop.com. From the Phone Zone Sports Desk, I'm Ryan Hedrick. Here's a look at what's trending in Western New York. The Philadelphia Eagles and their fans celebrated long into the night following the Eagles' first Super Bowl win ever. Eagles head coach Doug Peterson, tight end Zach Ertz, and defensive end Brandon Graham said their Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles, defied the odds. He's well-deserved of the honor, but I know that he would... Uh give credit where credit's due and, and uh, he had a lot of, lot of playmakers tonight make plays for him on, uh, uh, on both sides of the ball. The stage was never too big for him all year 
and he kind of did the same thing that we expected him to do tonight. I'm so happy for uh, Nick Foles because, you know, a lot of guys didn't give him a chance, but he lit it up, and then when the defense needed to make a stop, we made a play to get off the field and win the game. To college basketball where St. Bonaventure pulled off an incredible win over the weekend. Let me take you to the Steel City in Pittsburgh for a matchup with Duquesne. Time winding down. Senior guard Jalen Adams pulls up about 26 feet out. Boom! Three-pointer, an incredible night for Adams. 40 points, his previous career high, 35. Terrence Smith. Final score, St. Bonaventure 84, Duquesne 81. They have a matchup with St. Louis on Wednesday and then a big matchup with Richmond next weekend. From the Phone Zone Sports Desk, I'm Ryan Hedrick. It all unfolds here. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Catch your first defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. Like great food, great news needs experts. Become a community reporter when you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about. Drop us a line on Facebook today. Speaking of great food, Jeremy's Bellevue offers pasta, classic burgers, seafood, and of course, wings. Visit Jeremy's Bellevue on Facebook. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to News Now. The Dodge Ram Super Bowl commercial that aired last night is sparking some criticism. The ad aired Sunday during the game that featured a Martin Luther King Jr. speech from 50 years ago. Take a look. <laughs> If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know the theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. Now, some viewers felt it was a little disgraceful to use the civil rights leader's speech to advertise the truck. The King Estate said in a statement that it had reviewed the ad before it aired to make sure it met certain standards. The Fiat Chrysler Group, which owns Ram, said that it worked closely with representatives from King's Estate to make sure that they received the necessary approval. Dakota, most of this kind of controversy is coming out on Twitter just overnight mm -hmm. of people saying, you know, they shouldn't have had King in the speech, but really that's a powerful commercial, at least for me. It gave me chills mm -hmm. hearing uh, a pretty famous read by right. King and, and then also, you know, with the images and you have, you know, the moving the church, you know, images of the military mm -hmm. there, people overcoming things, very much showing a united group. I so badly want to make a comment, but I want to keep my mouth shut. No, what is it? It'll get me in trouble if I say it. Okay. I, I don't know. So I, I would have to say for me, my take on it is just that I, I see where people are coming from. You know, the whole 
preservation of history and not taking them out of context by trying to sell a truck. I completely respect that. But at the same time, as long as they had approval from the King of State to, to use that chunk of um, audio, it's almost the people who made the commercial, that's their creative vision, right? It's so powerful because they have a speech, which is what is powerful, combined with these images, mm -hmm. just to cr even create a, a better image of it. What... Uh, what was your other favorite commercial from last night? Did you have any other? Did you have well, like a favorite? I really didn't get to see too many of the commercials because I was watching it on a live stream mm -hmm. because I don't have cable anymore. So uh, I had to watch it on the NBC uh, sports app for Roku, and they're not allowed to show certain commercials. Ah, so you didn't get so, to see all of them. Yeah, I seen some of them, but not all of them. I'm Out of the sure ones like. you saw, did you have a favorite? Or I don't care about no. the Super Bowl commercials, quite <laughs> frankly. That's my time to get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> For me, I'd have to say the first responders commercial was pretty good. I, I really liked yeah, that. Yeah, that one. was a pretty good that one. That was yeah. I, I enjoyed that one. I thought it was nice to our producer likes the Danny DeVito. Mm -hmm. So pretty good overall. The game though, that was exciting. Here we go. I know okay, so Dakota's a Patriots fan, we all know. I'm but at the same time, that was a good game. Yeah. It was, it was a good game. I liked it. I, I mean, you know, the game itself wasn't bad. I mean, you yeah. know, it was a pretty good game. I mean, there were a couple calls in the game that Mm, little iffy, but um, otherwise, you know, the How Patriots tried their best. You know, nobody can take away that the Patriots did not try their hardest to come wait, back. Wait, 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 time out. How can you say that the calls were iffy? Dude, all season long, the Patriots have bribed the refs. Like, for real. Come on. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example, Okay. The rules in the NFL are just like the rules in NASCAR. They, they are so inconsistent. And everybody complains about this with the Patriots, but it's true. Because you watch any game, it doesn't matter if it's the Patriots playing or anybody, there are always calls that are always flip-flopped. Uh -huh. Okay, like, so for example, let's say we're in NASCAR. Right. And both you and I own teams. Okay. Okay. We both do a something we're not supposed to. Some sort of, you know, uh, uh, I do something in my do, engine and it becomes okay. right. So, let's say that you do I'm in something. Trouble. Okay. So, let's say that we both do the exact same thing to our cars. Right. Illegal modifications, not approved by NASCAR. Right. There's supposed to be a set in stone rule as to what's supposed to happen. Right. So, let's say that, you know, I get so, you know, so, you know, we're both called into the NASCAR hauler, and my penalty is going to be a $10,000 fine and docked 25 driver points. All right. Now, your penalty for the exact same thing, the exact same illegal modification on your car as mine was, now your penalty is a $100,000 fine, 50 driver points, your crew chief is suspended for right, six Right, that's races. not fair because yeah, it's the it's same these, thing. And the NFL works the exact same way with the calls because in many times in the past, that last touchdown pass where he became sort of a runner and ran it in, right. I've seen cases where that was right. overturned and the touchdown was taken away. I, and that happened or appeared to happen during the Steelers game. Yes. Which is what made them not continue so to the playoffs. The but, but wait, wait, wait. That... He, last night, I talked to experts last night, and it looked like it, that he was running. The call is stupid. The he was stupid. running, and that's why he broke and the that's plane. that's not me complaining. But if you're catching Patriots it fan, and you don't have control of the ball and you're not running and it's just a catch, the then that's why stupid. that's a court. I know. I know. I agree with you. Because the Steelers could have been in this. If, but th what I was told last night was that because he was running and he broke the plane, that's why he got the touchdown. He didn't have control, but it didn't matter because he broke the plane with the ball. It's the dumbest rule I've ever heard. That's you what know, I was told. You know, all that matters is we beat every other AFC team to get there. We came up short, but hey, it's always better losing by a short margin than it is by having a complete blowout. Right. Either way, it was a good game by the Patriots mm -hmm. and the Eagles. I always say this, they don't pay your bills, folks. So it was entertaining. I was entertained. It was a good I game had some otherwise. pistachios. It was a great night. It was a good game <laughs> otherwise. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for a couple of... if he, And quite frankly, when you have Chris Collinsworth on commentary saying that the call should have been overturned, who Chris Collinsworth, every single time he commentates a Patriots game, is always for the other team, when, when he says that a call should have been overturned. 
But hey, at least we made it further than the Bills. Let's go to the seven day while I, while you throw things at your screen right now. And, or uh, follow so, us, whichever one. Comes. Yeah, so there you go. 19 degrees for today. Chance for a few snow showers tomorrow. Another storm off the East Coast comes our way Wednesday through Wednesday night. Drop in measurable snow. We, it's still too early to throw out numbers. We will, of course, keep on that forecast throughout the week, and we'll keep you updated right here. All right, Dakota. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I, I still love you. Yeah, I love you, too. Even That's though you're like a Patriots fan. <laughs> We they have a mutual, yet, so. right, no, yeah. no. <laughs> That's it for today. Be sure to join us right back here tomorrow. News continues 24-7 at wnynewsnow.com. Have a great one. See you tomorrow.